guys, so my name's Kim and this is my first ever booktube video, hopefully that I will actually upload. I do have other booktube videos that have not been uploaded because I've been too scared. Um, but this one I really wanted to make because I'm joining in a couple of readathons this in the month of November, just coming up, and I wanted to share a couple of TBRs with you and join in the conversation a bit more than I have been. The two readathons that I'm going to take part in in the month of November is Believeathon, run by Gavin Hetherington, and Buzzwordathon, run by Books and Lala. Both of whose channels I will link down below and with their announcement videos to these two readathons. So, to start with, I'm going to talk about Believeathon, run by Gavin. For Believeathon, the aim is to read at least four books. Um, that are children's or middle grade in the month of November, so that's one book for every week. And I just think it's so nice because um, children's books can be great to read, and as an adult, you don't even really think to read children's books. And Gavin is a big, big advocate for children's and middle grade reads and kind of keeping involved in the literature going on at that age range. Um, and it's really interesting for me just because. I was pretty like, I'd say like a couple of years ago, really stuck up about fiction, so not even children's and middle grade, like even adult fiction. I didn't see the point in reading it. I thought if you're going to read something, why don't you learn and read a factual book? And since watching BookTube a lot more and reading some recommendations and, and, and realising that actually reading fiction is really well, number one, it's really fun. Number two, it is very informative. It's just really stuck up about it for who knows what reason. But I'm all pulled out of that now. I've been wrenched out by the booktube community and I've read some really great books from recommendations. Even um, children's books. So I've read this year, I've read Nevermore and, um, and The Wondersmith by Jessica Townsend and just absolutely adore those books, just love them so much and now I'm at the point where I have to wait for the third one and I'm like, who would have thought that really with middle grade? Um, anyway, so there are 10 prompts and a group book for the Leavathon. I will not be trying to read 11 books like I think some other people are trying to do even more than that. I'm a really slow reader so I'm not a really slow reader anymore but I can't read 11 books in one month, that, no, that blows my mind, people read so quick. <laughs> so I've picked three prompts and I'm going to do the group book as well. One of my books falls into two categories, probably they fit into other prompts as well. Gavin explains all of them in his video and he has a compendium of the different prompts, so I won't reveal all them all here. Um, but I will talk about the ones that I'm going to include it in my Believeathon. So first up is one that fits into the prompt of a book that has magic and another prop of a book that has strong friendships. And for that I'm going to pick Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone by J.K. Rowling, just in case you don't know. <laughs> so I listened to Harry Potter for the first time I began in December 2017 and then went into spring of 2018 listening to them for the first time. I was a bit old for Harry Potter when it came out, I was a late teen, so I guess again I was a bit stuck up about it, didn't want to get involved in Harry Potter, I had other things on my mind, um, and then I never really read it and then the plays came out, the theatre shows came out and my partner really wanted to watch them so I was like well I'm not going to watch the plays until I've read the books, this is a very long boring story, end of the day I listened to them, the Stephen Fry audiobooks and I just loved them so much, they were so good. So um, I actually did the test to see what house I was in before I read the books and it was Hufflepuff so when buying the editions I've decided to go with the Hufflepuff edition. Secondly is a book that actually got me wanting to do the 
read a thought in the first place, do believe a thought in the first place. And that was because one of the prompts was read your childhood favourite book. And one of my childhood favourite books was The Magic Faraway Tree by Amy Blyton. And I just loved this book so much. I just read it all the time. But the older I've got, the less I remember. I remember Moonface. I remember a man with saucepans. I remember different worlds. I don't remember anything else. But I remember loving it. Like, so I really hope that it stands up to the test of time and I still really love it when I read it and it's really nostalgic because I can't believe I haven't reread this in years and years and years. So the magic far away tree. And I do find like I often do buy it for my friends' children, um, based on the fact that I loved it so much as a kid. So it would be good to reread just to see what I'm actually giving their children to read now, if you know what I mean. Third up is a book that fits the prompt to have a animals and in character and for that I've picked And the Oceans Was Our Sky by Patrick Ness which has a whale as the main character. I actually watched a review of this ages ago and it sounded really cool, really interesting idea following the perspective of whales to us. Um, I can't really remember much detail about it and to be honest like I quite like going into things without knowing too much information anyway, if any. So I think I'm not going to bother to read the blurb for this one. Um, but actually I didn't know it was a children's book but I went into the library and there it was sat on the shelf and I was like huh that fits the prompt quite nicely and it's one that I definitely wanted to read before. So um, yeah, the illustrations in this are just so nice. Let me show you. Like, they're so, I just, I just think they're really like lovely. Oh, there's a person. Um, yeah, so anyway, this should be a pretty quick read because it's so short and the Magic Faraway Tree is pretty short as well. So hopefully I'll do this. Ah, who knows? So the fourth book I'm going to read for the Believe of Fun is the Greek book which is Frostheart by Jamie Littler. Um, this is one of Gavin, Gavin's favourite books at the moment. He like loves us so much, so much so that he's allowing us to start this book before November starts. So you can kind of get right involved now if you wanted to join him, I believe with them. Um, it's about a young boy called Ash who finds he has magical powers, I believe, and then goes on a quest to find his parents. That's all I know about this, but this too has like super cute illustrations and like all the way through. It's so sweet. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. So hopefully it's really cute. And uh, I bought it because I'm hoping that if I really like it, I'm gonna pass it on to one of my friend's kids so then they can read it. Um, and it's just such a beautiful book. Like I think it will be a really nice little gift for someone. So that's Believeathon, and we shall see if I do it because that's quite a lot of books for me to read um, as a particularly slow reader. So next up is Buzzwordathon, and this is a readathon that's based around one particular word or a group of words that is picked by Books and Lala. Again, I will link the uh, announcement video below. But for this one, which is round five, the buzzword words are numbers. So it could be any numbers. She said in the video, any numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, blah, blah, blah. And it can also be first, second, third, fourth, fifth, blah, 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 blah. So any numbers like an infinite amount of numbers. What wasn't pointed out was decimal pointed numbers, but I assume that that counts as well, because I have a decimal point. So this reader really runs from November 18th through to November 24th. So it's just one week. So you have to read a book in a week, which gives me anxiety, <laughs> but it doesn't give me anxiety. But it um, makes me worried because I don't think I can read a book in a week, not at least the books that I have here for it. So if only, I had a children's book because then I might have half a chance. But I already have some books with numbers in 
on my shelves because I really love maths and physics <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, I did physics at university, find it really great and interesting. So uh, I already have some sciencey related books with numbers in. But the first one is First Man, by, uh, which is the life about Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon. Um, I actually know so little about the, la the moon landing and um, that kind of time of life, and obviously it's such a big deal. And I think it was 50 years this year um, since the landing, so there's been a lot going on about the moon in like the London kind of museums, probably museums around the world. Yeah. So I just think it would be a really interesting read about this guy's life because I feel like it must have been insane. <laughs> All that training and stuff that they do, obviously I've seen bits and pieces on TV or the internet. I just find it fascinating like that they could put themselves physically and mentally through so much in order to prepare for a mission like this and I would just be interested to read because now obviously there's so much talk about humans going to Mars for the first time and things like that so it's interesting times to think about astronauts. The other book that is probably highly likely that I will pick up <laughs> is 13.8 The Quest to Find the True Age of the Universe and the Theory of Everything by John Gribben. And the reason I say I probably will pick this up is because I feel like I know a fair bit of the science behind this topic, which I take to mean that I can read it quicker. Um, I do really want to read it because I feel like it's good that even if you know bits and pieces of science and cosmology anyway, it, it's nice to read a popular science book which consolidates kind of your knowledge and um, I enjoy everybody writes and explains things in different ways so I always struggle with explaining physical concepts to people and why scientists say they know or they think they know the things that they think they know or do know what the facts are um, I have a really hard time articulating anything like that so I love to read popular science books to try and get better at being able to explain things to people. <laughs> See, I'm proving the point. I'm really bad at explaining things. So there's that one. And the final book that I may read, um, which is less likely because it's fatter, is Things to Make and Do in the Fourth Dimension by Matt Parker. Matt Parker is also a YouTuber and I will link his YouTube channel below. He's a mathematician and also a stand-up comedian. He does stand-up about maths. Um, but it's really he's really funny. I really like him. He's this Australian guy. Pretty sure he's Australian. Um, he lives in the UK. And I just think he's really great. He's really funny. And this is another thing. In addition to infinity, like, the fourth spatial dimension, like, blows my mind as well. So... This is another reason why I want to read this book, because I want my mind blown. <laughs> but I doubt I'll pick this up in the week, because I don't think I can read this in one week. And then the last thing that I will say, which isn't a readathon, it's a read-along, that Handpick blog is running, who I will link her YouTube down below as well. Um, but she's doing a 1984 um, by George Orwell read, a, read Along, where this book is split into three different parts. So the first part everyone's reading in October, and then second part November, third part December. Um, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because I'm currently in it right now and I'm absolutely loving it. Like, if you haven't for some reason read 1984 before, like me who hadn't read it before, um, then like really like it. I think I'm really really like gripped straight off the bat. Really recommend so far. Um, but also because it's numbers, so it kind of fits in. So to be honest, so I've just had a brainwave. I could read the second part of this instead of trying to read a full book if I'm struggling with Believerfon as well, because I do work. And we're moving house. So there's lots going on. So if that's the case, I feel like already I'm getting, giving myself a get out of jail free card. 
um, I will read the second part of this for the read along for Hannah Pick Blog then and that will be me taking part in Buzzwordathon and counting it. Um, anyway, highly recommend. Great book. That's the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed it and um, hopefully I'll actually upload this. I keep recording these booktube videos and never uploading them. I think I'm just so scared of like friends and family finding them and ridiculing me about it in some way. Um, I don't know, but I love the community and I want to be a part of it more so here I am. Um, I hope you liked it and I'm hoping I will update um, as I go along. I'm not going to try and vlog or anything like that, there's no way I'll be able to do that well so I'm not going to do that. But um, I might do a halfway November point catch up just before Buzzwordathon to see how it's going and if and what I'm going to read and then end of the month like wrap up about it so yeah so thanks to everyone who's organized all these readathons um I just love them so much and thanks for watching <laughs>